Proteinuria will be the second disease of the genital urinary tract that we'll be discussing. And we have exactly 21 videos on proteinuria. So apart from this video, we have like 20 videos, right? Coming on proteinuria. So um, here we are just trying to look at the introduction to the whole concept. Like what is proteinuria? What are the types? All the stuff. Okay, so we are just having like a general overview or introduction to everything that has to do with proteinuria. So introduction, we usually just pick up important, important, important points, right? They will let it be. They will come back doing detailed videos on all of those important points. So proteinuria is actually what? Dictation of proteins excreted in urine. Okay, this is like introduction, right? So the dictation of protein excreted in urine has been extensively used to access kidney disease. So proteinuria can be a disease on itself, and the persistent proteinuria specifically can be an indicator that what protein disease, uh, kidney disease is what persisting. Kidney disease is progressing, right? So proteinuria actually identifies patients with kidney damage, and those are the risks of a worsening kidney disease. And people who have what an increased risk of what cardiovascular morbidity. So an individual with proteinuria in the setting of a regular glomerular filtrate rate is at the risk of what progressive loss of kidney function. So as proteinuria is persisting, you simply know that what this patient is going down the line. Okay. So protein in urine can uh, can have causes that aren't due to underlying disease. Examples include individual variation, transient proteinuria, which is a common benign condition, which usually doesn't require medication to go on its own. Then also proteinuria can be due to what? Some medication side effects, like some medications that are currently taken. This is a side effect. Okay, proteins, need, uh, proteins will be excreted in urine and all that. All right. So proteinuria is actually a marker of kidney disease. It plays a role in screening, diagnosing, and monitoring for kidney disease. Okay, because uh, let me say there's a kidney disease, there's proteinuria. So as you are treating, you are trying to monitor to see how the disease is curing and all that. So it is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular events and progressive for kidney disease. Its prevalence, like that's a, is about what two percent of the population of the world. Okay, prevalence is what just two percent. Then it is usually higher in older people. So age is actually what a risk factor for this. Age is a risk factor for proteinuria. So it's usually higher in older people and those with comorbidities. Comorbidities like you are having other disease conditions, many multiple disease conditions. All right. So it's usually common with people that are characterized by this. All right. So this is proteinuria, presence of protein in urine. Um, normal excretion of what protein in urine normally is about what eighty milligrams per deciliter. Okay. Now, if the person is excreting what one one thirty milligrams per deciliter, there's usually a problem. So there's eighty. Okay, it's usually what the normal is eighty plus or minus twenty four milligrams per deciliter, right? So once anything is going above 130, there's protein here already, okay? So excretion of this, um, the determ uh, determination of the normal excretion is usually higher in children, adolescents, and pregnant women, okay? So I think this is the bulk of the introduction to this concept, all right? Noting out the normal values, which is 80 plus or minus 24. And once it goes above 130, there's usually a problem.